recorded live from the drive-thru of a Taco Bell at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's the Photo Happy Hour Podcast. everybody and welcome to the photo happy hour podcast i'm one of your hosts michael mowbray joining me today are carl kaler and dan freevault <laughs> what's up everyone glad to be here and then up on the upper right you can't see him but i'm looking at my screen and uh in all of his splendor actually uh, carl kaler is wearing a tuxedo for this grand opening <laughs> well i felt it was appropriate and I, I just might have to say this we look like the brady bunch here on these little squares here <laughs> <laughs> so in case, yeah. we, in case we refer to uh we're actually watching each other which we're doing this uh live on tape i guess uh long distance because carl's up in iron mountain michigan where it's still what probably negative 17 and 53 feet of snow uh just reverse that yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> and then dan's in green bay and i'm down around madison wisconsin so we're all over the place but all pretty much around wisconsin and recording this uh, long distance. So we're looking at each other on video screens, making faces at each other. <laughs> Which you're, you're, if you're watching or if you're listening to this, it's probably good you can't see us. Yeah, yeah. very good you can't see us. <laughs> yeah. Originally, we were going to do this without pants, but um, I think it's audio. Wait, wait, oh, we you guys are wearing oh, wait. pants? Oh, are you guys are wearing you, pants? Excuse my head. So, pants. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept here is uh, basically we're, we just drink. And we talk about photography, and um, hopefully we uh, share something that's interesting, share some information that uh, might help you out, hopefully are at least semi-entertaining, and uh, we'll see where this goes. Uh, topic for today, we're talking about creativity. Creativity, where does your creativity come from? What is creativity to you? Heck, if I know somebody else, go first. Creativity, I feel like I'm part of the spelling bee again. C R E I. I, I don't remember. <sighs> Creativity is so tough, isn't it? I mean, I mean, we all can understand f-stops and shutter speeds and understand the science of things and depth of field and all this kind of knowledgeable stuff. But man, creativity, that's uh, quite honestly, that's what has been, um, you know, like, bashing me <laughs> in the last like 10 <laughs> years. Uh, quite frankly, I, I, you know, it's, I, I see so many really cool ideas from uh, students and people posting on social media and um, and in print competition when I'm judging or watching online. And I see all these really, really interesting creative pieces and I go, gosh, I wish, wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> and then because I see all of it, yeah, it is. It's tough. You know, it's hard. You, end up, you compare yourself to all these really cool things and you're like, wow, I... I start to feel like a fraud after a while because I see this and go, oh, wow, I, I don't know if I could do that. And I see that and I was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And I'd like to try to do that. And look at all what all these other people are doing. And it is a trap, I, I, I think, for all of us. Uh, what do you think, Dan? Absolutely. And, you know, it's easy to compare yourself to everyone and, and you guys being judges as well. Like you said, you're seeing the best, the best, the best. And that can be inspiring but also quite intimidating you know and i know like dave jr and what, what what he said to me which is quite interesting is he actually disconnected from everything which freed his mind up to be more creative instead of i think for me personally it's like oh i'm gonna watch movies i'm gonna be inspired by this person and artwork and galleries but sometimes we get so overwhelmed and, and almost discouraged by looking at too much stuff so I thought that was an interesting take. Dave's kind of a unicorn, though. I mean, <laughs> That's true. He's a rare beast out there. I mean, you could put Dave in a dark room with blindfolded and headphones and you come up with something creative. Um, but I, I don't, me personally, I, I, I get inspired by looking at other things. And the trap I feel like I fall into, then I feel like all the work I do that's maybe creative is derivative because I feel like I saw it someplace and that inspired this thought, but it isn't that different from what i saw does that ever happen to you guys oh, oh absolutely. absolutely yeah absolutely yeah. yeah or sometimes i feel like oh i got this great idea and i kind of put it together and then maybe i 
either realize halfway through that I probably saw it somewhere else, but I forgot about it because <laughs> I tend to forget things. <laughs> or it's like, then I see someone else. It's like, oh yeah, that wasn't original. And you know, what is original? You know, it, it, you know, nothing really is an original anymore. You know? Well, even, even the old masters back in like the 1600s and 1700s, they would, um, you know, the, the Dutch painters would travel to Italy and they'd, they'd go to some of the famous painters there and they'd sit in and watch them paint and sit in with their students and they'd learn a little bit and they'd take that back to Dutch land. (laughs) Netherlands? (laughs) Yeah, whatever. (laughs) We're going to be here. Dutch land. (laughs) You know, they had that that song, Dutch land, Dutch land. Anyway. um, (laughs) And they would incorporate some of the thoughts from those guys into their work. And so, I mean, even they were doing derivative stuff, but it still feels it feels really hard to come up with something that's truly unique and original and maybe it can't be done i don't know maybe everything's been done already yeah but people have been saying that for years and they still come something still comes up with something that we haven't seen before so uh i mean it's and look at like ben shirk right now i mean i don't want to drop names of people that aren't involved right now with this but but he seems to come up with things of everyday life and, and look at like uh, Norman Rockwell when uh, creating the paintings of the Americana. And there was, there was always something that, that he could paint or create based on what was going on in society. And because of it, uh, and here's, here's the fun part, how this all mixes together. And you look at somebody that had the talent of, for painting like Norman Rockwell, let's just use him for example. Um, he understood the psychology of it all, the technique of it all, the brush strokes, the composition, all that, but he still had a story to tell and he still had a creativity, but because of all his skill sets and his technical skill sets, he was able to show us all that creativity, um, which is kind of fun because that's really how, it's harder, <laughs> it's strange to say, but it's harder for photographers than the painters to be creative because we're still stuck with what's in front of us or what we have to record first. Whereas the painter, anything that they have in their mind or their heart, they could put onto canvas or put onto watercolor paper or whatever medium that they're working with. So um, now with Photoshop and all the composite work that you guys are all doing, which is really cool and creative too, it's another skill set that allows you to be creative and to give us something that's original. And so I think that you, it, there is still absolutely room for originality. It's just maybe harder because we're so used to looking at all the other people right now. <laughs> Interesting side story about uh, Norman Rockwell. Did you ever see that he used to have photos taken or he would take photos of subjects and then he bases paintings on those photos? So how is that any different than some of what we do now? No different. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to like jump off on that too, as far as I got into photography because I felt like I was creative, but not artistic. Uh, I'd see my friends in high school and everything drawing and be like, I can't start with a blank canvas. So at least with photography, it was great. And then I could add to it. And now with composites and Photoshop's, Photoshop, you could do so much more. But I also feel like a lot of times, like I have this amazing idea but not quite the technical skill to put it together and i keep pushing myself to like kind of catch up with what's in my head and it's right. not always it's not always that even <laughs> I, I, I felt that pain the last time i entered an artist case because i had all these ideas in my head and it's like i'll composite these things and then um i started to do it i'm like uh i i don't know how to do this <laughs> it's like can't i can't i just plug in and download like it's so clear in my head like it's so extremely clear like just plug in and download it to the computer but it doesn't work that way <laughs> yeah even in my head it's a little blurry and wavery it just it's kind of like pieces of it are there and then i just like oh yeah yeah that's- but that's because you drink a lot so you know well that's okay. true <laughs> and to that uh, we'll call it sociable Cheers. everybody drinks sociable. There there sociable. What is your drink of choice right now? What are you guys drinking? I'm drinking uh, honey whiskey from Evan Williams. Since I'm drinking a, a La Crema Chardonnay from the Russian River Valley, Ooh. slightly buttery. 
Fancy. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the fancy one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm drinking uh, Lagavulin, Lagavulin scotch. Uh, I went with the eight-year-old. Um, it's not quite as round as some of the older ones, but yeah, it's tasty. So. Cool. <laughs> Hey, back to that creativity thing, just for a second. <laughs> Wait, what? No, 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 we're talking about drinking. Okay. Drinking hey, no, is good no, no. too, but you know, I'll, we'll talk Great, more about that in a little bit. Exactly. Uh, I, I found it really interesting that a friend of ours, uh, Dan McClanahan, had mentioned, uh, and I don't remember if he said it during his program la or two years ago at at Imaging, or if it was in one of his posts that he made. But it stuck in my head that it just he nailed it. He said that you know I've been working so hard trying to understand all this the computers and the lighting and the compositing and the camera systems and how that works and the f-stops and shutter speeds and because i have so many things in my head and now i've gotten to a point where i understand all that stuff so well that i can take anything that's in my head and put it on paper and i thought <laughs> you made it dude yeah. i mean that was like the ultimate success yeah. as a photographer i thought man i want to be you someday um you know, maybe, you know, we'll keep practicing, but I think that that says it all to me right there. If we can, if we could probably pull that off, but my, when I do that, you ever see that post on Facebook about the tattoo artist, you know, they're, they're, the guys that imagine the dragon and then you see this little like cartoon character. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that me. Too, I'm just, you know, <laughs> you get what you pay for. Okay. <laughs> right. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But we'll get there. You know, we just got, it doesn't happen overnight. Well, and you know, and that's, that's an excellent point. Like, you know, people watch listening to this, I keep saying watching, sorry, because we see each other and we're used to web, I'm used to webinars or speaking live, but people listening to this, like, like, don't be discouraged. Like it takes years and, you know, to get to that and, and a lot of practice, like you look at musicians, like you, you know, or the, the law of 10,000 hours or not the law, but the theory of 10,000 hours too to become a master at something, you know, or you read the book, is it outliers by Malcolm Gladwell about like the Beatles and how did they become so successful? It seemed overnight where well, they were playing gigs every night for years, but once they were discovered, they were polished and everyone, and they exploded. Uh, so it's like, it's easy to look back and, or look and compare yourself kind of going even back to where we started with comparing and be like, oh, I, I wish I was that, or I'm, I'm never going to be good enough. Not knowing that that person spent, right. you know, 15, 20 years and, and busted their butt to get where they're at or, or to get at that point. We're in a society now, too, where we want instant gratification. We want everything to happen so quickly. And in the quote I see all the time that applies to our industry is, and applies to, I think, just about any any industry is don't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. To which I always reply, I've got a pretty large middle, so I don't know how you can <laughs> compare yourself to that anyway. But um, it's true because you don't know where somebody is in their in their journey and their process, and they could be really far down the road, and they you know they've got their twenty thousand hours in, and they've mastered all these things. Where you're just figuring out you know f stops and inverse square law. What is that? I had to bring that up in the first episode, by the way. Somebody had to say inverse oh. square law. Oh boy, now we, we don't say anything more. We about just it. we're we just lost everyone. It. <laughs> I don't that's think another drinking really moment i'm just saying oh, cool. everybody, yeah, <laughs> um, you know I, I remember back when uh i was helping coach my boys uh youth football team and the guys were throwing the ball around and everything and, and i i i noticed that um boy didn't look really happy about things he was getting frustrated and i said well what's what's going on he said well he said, I'm trying my best to throw this ball, but it doesn't go that far. And you watch on TV and Brett Favre, he throws that ball a long way. And I said, you know, <laughs> what you don't see is that Brett Favre spent his entire life throwing that ball to get to that point. And I said, you know, it, part of me thought, what if we took all professional sports? And I can't believe I'm saying this out loud because I really like watching football. But if we took all professional sports off TV for like two years and only aired, only videoed and showed the world what they did to get there. Only showed the practice sessions, mm -hmm. their personal workout, all the things that the behind the scenes that it took to get there. I think the kids would learn a real lot more lessons about work ethic and what it takes and not just see, like Michael, you said, the end or the middle of somebody's journey instead of your beginning. And um, the kids have to understand that. And we, But we, we have to understand that too. I mean, 
uh, some of these people that we look up to in this industry, they've been doing what we feel is great for a very long time. And, you know, some of us, you know, are not at that level or don't have that many hours in it, into it yet. So got to start somewhere, guys. And some people have a higher capacity for upward movement. Does that make any sense? You know, they've, they've got greater well, creative capacity or creation capacity where, you know, maybe, maybe I've topped out. Maybe, maybe this, this, as I point to myself, this is the best I can get. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe no. that, but, but well, yeah, it crosses your mind. It does. And there's, there's, you know, God given talent that, that some people have more and there's people who have drive and there's people who maybe have other commitments where they can't put as much, you know, training into, to get into it to different levels. And it's just going to take a little bit longer, you know? So yeah, there's a ton of factors with that, but Having said that, the cool thing I think with photography, which we all know, is um, it also comes down to can you make a living? And your artwork, just because your artwork may be amazing, doesn't mean you have the business sense and vice versa. Someone whose artwork is is good, clean artwork and maybe average can have a, a, a super successful business. Or uh, people like volume photographers are making tons of money, sure. but, but you look at it and, and people be like, well, that's not creative or artistic. Well, you know what? That's a business. That's they're yeah. making, t you know, tons yeah. of money. So, Absolutely. so trying to find that balance of, of creativity, but yet also, you know, earn a living is, is, you know, it's not like we're football players where we have to be, <laughs> you know, the 0.1% to be a, a, a professional football or athlete. You know? Right. Well, you know, creativity and making money are mutually exclusive. I mean, they they aren't necessarily connected, you know, as you said. So when we think about creativity um, and where it comes from for you guys, and I, for me, it's it's got to be organic. And it's funny. I was having I was having this conversation with Lisa, my wife, the other day, and um, I was watching this uh, Hollywood reporter round table table. I think you guys were sharing the video around too, mm -hmm. um, where they were talking to uh, all these people who were nominated for Oscar uh, Oscars for songwriting from, I think from two years ago, maybe. So it was Pharrell and it was sting and it was John legend and it was um, uh, Justin Timberlake and Tori Amos and, you know, and Alicia keys and all these Alicia people. Keys, yeah. And they're, and they were talking about, and Pharrell, I think it was Pharrell that, that captured it for me. And I was like, oh, that's me. It's like when he went to write some of the songs for, I can't remember which soundtrack it was. Uh, it might have been uh, Selma or it might have been um, uh, the one with Gru. <laughs> and I can't remember the name of the cartoon where, where Happy came from. I, oh, it was that one. As a matter of fact, yeah. that was it. Because he yeah. was trying to think of, you know, he was trying to come up with a song. And it was, he was using all these parameters or what's happening in the story. And he couldn't cre create something that was, you know, that was good because he had too many parameters on it. So he, he backed off and he thought about it for a little bit. And it's like, how do I write a song about this? How do I write a song about a guy who's having the happiest day of his life? Oh, oh, happy. Boom. He went down that path. He chased down that path. And that's kind of the way I feel like my creativity comes from. It's anytime I've got a plan where I'm going to do something creative, it's mediocre. You know, it just doesn't have all the elements that make it creative. You know, it just it's yeah, it's I feel like it's in a box where mm -hmm. where I where I approach a situation, I'll set up creative shoots and I don't have a game plan because I'll have maybe I'll bring in a model or a makeup artist or whatever and they'll say, Okay, what are we doing? I'm like, I don't know. And they look at me freaked out because they don't know what to do. And it's like, just create something. And then I react to that. And I feel that's where my creativity is based is on reacting to situations and to the environment or where whatever is being presented to me, then I react and play off of that. But if I could try to create it from the beginning, eh, no, it doesn't work for me. Whereas other people can, you know, they can script it out and they can map it out and they follow it and it looks great. And it doesn't work for me. How about you guys? Oh yeah. I, I'm the same way. Like I, I look at people like Brooke Shaden and she has a notebook full of concepts and they're so visual and then she'll shoot she'll go like click and then click and click and put it all together i'm like whoa like really <laughs> so i'm like that's what i need to do 
And so I can, I, it, cause I have a lot of ideas. I'm more of a, a dreamer, uh, I guess. So I'll have ideas. I'm like, okay, this is how it's going to be. And then I try and plan it and I, I try and put it all together. And sometimes that works out, but nine times out of 10, we go way off a of left field and, and, and then create something even more powerful. Um, and I think that comes down to, you know, when you were saying it, I never realized it, but you know, that's kind of what we do every day. Yeah. We have to like True. Re- read our clients and, and adapt and, and connect with them instantly. So maybe that's kind of being in the portrait world as compared to Brooke, who's in the artist world, kind of how we operate because we've done it so long. It just feels comfortable. Actually, you know, you, you just like sparked, you got the light bulb going right there. I mean, well, no, really, but think about it. I mean, you're right. That's the thing. I mean, the best work I've ever done, that I feel that I've ever done, is when we really, when I really connect with the person I'm photographing. You know, mm-hmm. if it was something that I thought of, and okay, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to have this person here, and it's going to be doing this, and this is a story that I'm going to portray to everybody. But then they don't like it because it wasn't them. And, you know, when – and that's why I think maybe that is the difference between, you know, our, our PPA print competition work and our, our client work, our everyday work, is that PPA stuff, it's more a thought of art and technical and um, – I, I hate to say it, but like robotic versus yeah. the personal aspect of – the connecting, the connection, whether it was a perfect image in the eyes of our photographic peers or not, to that person that you dealt with and you worked with and you created their story for them and it fit them and their parents looked at it and their friends looked at it and said, this is who I see every day. I I, I can see into his soul when I look at this. Yes. Maybe that's the difference. Maybe, and, and that's okay. That's okay. Well, and I'd rather have that, I think. Um, I, I agree, because I think that's where we get what, what we call green merit. So it's where the money yeah. comes from. And we've we've all had people where, uh, or clients or subjects where, you know what, we know all the posing rules and how the hand should be and all that stuff. And they just can't do it. I mean, we can try to move them. We can try to fit, and it just will never come off as being PPA print competition worthy because you just, that client will, they're just not, into it or they can't pull off that look or they can't pull off that pose and as much as we try but you know what it could end up being if we just go with the flow and go organically with them and tune into who they are it could be the best portrait they've ever had it might not be technically perfect but they may love it like you said the mom may see that and see they see their little girl there who's grown into a teenager or almost adult and they don't see posing flaws because they don't know what the posing flaws are. We do. Mm -hmm. That being said, it could, if we did it more correctly and more psychologically correctly and still had that connection, then it would be even more powerful. I think that's where it's important to still think that, yeah, don't throw all the rules out the window. No, no, not the that. (laughs) Exactly. But, you know, still, I think it's more important for that connection and that, you know, emotional uh, teamwork that you that you created with that person. I'm going to take us on a tangent. Uh, both we're of you drinking. Guys, Yay! Oh no! Well, yeah, we of course we're drinking. Um, right. Both of you guys have uh, started new projects recently, and I think it's a good time to. It's almost like a sponsor moment here. <laughs> it's, tell, us, uh, tell everybody listening a little bit about the the new projects that you've got going on. Uh, Carl, I'm going to go with you first since huh. you're, you're in the upper right, and uh, Dan, you get to go next. Uh, well, as a lot of you probably know, I, I my passion is seeing people succeed. Um, I love watching any kind of sporting event, any kind of, I don't care if it's uh, um, the new drama play or the spelling bee. I, I love watching people succeed in what they're doing. And of course, photography uh, is a, a, a you know, big part of my life. It's it's my business. It's also where, you know, my biggest hobby uh, growing up. And so now I decided to go ahead and create a service that we can do a review service for people's portfolios. Um, 
You can do it as a video, and it's really important to see your own work reviewed by somebody that understands how we're seeing an image, how the human brain sees an image, and that's kind of my other background to my other my other training. Uh, but then it's also important that you learn from others. And so we also have a global portfolio review where every month, and we did our first one this, this week, uh, actually, where uh, everybody logs on from all over the place and we choose images from all over the country or the world, depending on uh, who's submitting images. And we discuss them so we can all learn from different uh, zip codes and different mindsets and different um, creativity uh, that they have and maybe in, in the area of the world that they live in. So um, it's, it's at uh, ccphotocoach.com and check it out. It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. I'm, 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 I'm all pumped about it. It's, it's what I love to do. I love to share with people, make them better. So you've, you've got, you've got different levels of memberships there. And uh, this, I know that's just got off the ground, but it uh, seems like there's a, a lot of people interested in it so far. So uh, that's, that's a good start. It is. Uh, and yes, we can do, people can buy things individually or they can log on for one month at a time uh, for uh, for a web or a portfolio review or even one month at a time for a global portfolio review. But it's a lot cheaper um, to actually buy a membership. There's three tiers. There's a, a, a base level, a silver level that they can, they'll be part of all and a whole the full year every month the global webinars and uh they also um the goal level has the all the globals every month plus it also allows you to send in four images a month that i review and send back a video so you can watch it anytime and all these things that get reviewed or our webinars they're, they're all recorded and they're all in your library so you can go back to these things um You'll have 12, 13, 24 of these things in your library uh, towards the end of the year that you can go back and revisit. Uh, but our platinum membership is really kind of cool because not only do we do the globals and uh, personal portfolio reviews, but you also have a one-on-one -on -one with me where we set up a webinar and share screens and talk through artwork and darkroom technician stuff and uh, whatever it is you need to talk about. And uh, we can... You can do a little bit, I can talk, you can do some more, and it's a great way of gaining uh, learning abilities really fast. That's really exciting too, because um, I send, uh, anytime I'm picking out images for print competition, I always send them to Carl because, he, he, dude, you know so much about, compos well, all, all 12 elements, quite honestly, but, you know, composition and, and all the stuff and how to even crop it to make it more powerful. Um, that's gotta be really valuable and valuable tools for people who are trying to figure out their craft and and make their photography better in a hurry in, in my in my mind. You know, if you wanna get jump started and really get better in your photography in a hurry, get a coach. Cause I'll, too many of us are out there just kind of doing this on our own and we're fumbling around and oh, God forbid we're YouTubing stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to have a personal coach. So what was that? ccphotocoach.com? ccphotocoach.com. Think about it. Olympics are coming up this year uh, again, maybe. You know, hopefully they <laughs> actually have it. Um, but there is not a single athlete at that Olympics that didn't have a coach. Nobody does this on their own. You need somebody um, that's not just your friend, that's not, not your family, to tell you the things straight and to – uh, to help you along in your journey. So that's, that's what I do. That's my passion. Cool. Dan, what, what did you just launch? Well, and yeah, and I'm going to just kind of refresh everyone's memory here as well. I mean, we're three great friends and it was because of print competition because we kind of started this whole, we were always kind of friends, but it's like, Hey, we really trust what Carl has to say. I trust what Mike has to say. So started sending images just between the three of us like, what do you think? And, and, and it kind sucks. of help each other. Yeah. <laughs> we were all honest and brutal and, it, and it's, it's grown, you know, to now we're doing this crazy podcast uh, over the years, but yeah. So I have a, I have a membership as well. Uh, I launched a, a, a few months ago and, you know, my inspiration for it was when I started teaching and uh, especially after dark and those who, um, attended after dark and part of after dark it's a special community and it holds a special very special place in my heart i guess i i'm not going to spill 
my wine out in in, in, in we, we know, need a cheers a, a good a good cheers you know toast to ad because that was a great i'm, I'm gonna clink my glass on my microphone clink. There, you go. there we go yeah a little a little bit for for yeah. after dark there but i i learned so much uh being a a teacher every time i teach or mentor i learned so much and the people that were part of after dark the other mentors and the attendees we all pushed each other and we all like push each other to be more creative and, and to um, learn from each other as well as teaching each other. And that really, along with print competition, made me a, a, the photographer that I am today. And when After Dark stopped and, and, and there was less and less like in-person conventions, I, I wanted to keep some sort of community going where we pushed each other. I still love going to in-person events, but I feel myself included um, that you go to these events, you get fired up, you get excited, and then you come home and you get busy and then mm -hmm. you kind of don't implement anything. So what I wanted to do is kind of be a force or a, a positive influence on helping each other to keep uh, implementing what we learned. And so that's kind of where that membership is, is at, is helping each other learn as well as having videos where you get to see real live shoots that I do. And it's not it's not scripted. It's not models. It's not uh, beautifully choreographed and edited and, and filmed. It's like real raw stuff. And it's like, you'll see me make mistakes and I've recorded other people now as well. So you get to see how other people think, you know, you, you know, with, with the same models or same situation. And I think it's very powerful and very educational because you're, you're, it's not like, Hey, I could have edited, I could have done editing and made me look like I knew exactly everything is perfect and it's all roses. And, and that's not how it is. I'm real. I'm just a guy like, Hey, this is what I do. And, and, and people connect to that because they, you know, they, they, it helps give them confidence that they can make mistakes as well. It's like, yeah, really? like, you know, I'm not perfect. Like people would come up to me like, Oh my God, like you're perfect. And how do you do? I'm like, I'm not perfect. And I'm like, if you oh, would I'm see not, me, I can shoot, tell you that right now. Yeah. Me. You guys know. <laughs> <laughs> you see me shoot what i do is not technical hey, you? Not can you crazy. get stuff on the microphone she'll tell you you're not oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get benji get benji on the microphone yeah, benji, how, much where's time, benji? how much time do we have well he yeah. was just looking at me but i think he's <laughs> benji's <laughs> like, uh -oh. dog just so you all know but just, just you know it's, yeah. it's my dog but so yeah that's that's kind of the the theory behind it and and as i stayed away from memberships for a, a while i would sell products that are like you buy it once and you're done. But the thing with this too, like I mentioned earlier, is teaching helps me stay on top of my game and helps me get better. So kind of selfishly, it's like we're all in this together. I'm not just saying do this, do this. I, whenever I say do this, it's I'm firstly telling myself I need to do this. And I think someone else probably needs to hear that as well, or maybe it will help someone. If it helps someone else, great. If I'm telling it to myself anyways, hopefully it'll help someone else and we can all grow and get better together. What's, what's the website for that, Dan? So the website is, you can either go to seniorsunlocked.com or store.seniorsunlocked.com. And it's a, it's a membership that I'm only opening up periodically, but we'll have a link down there for, the podcast subscribers where they can, they can jump in. Um, Cause I don't really want to have it like constantly open. I want to kind of manage it because it is a lot of work and I, I don't want it to kind of like blow up out of control either. I want to have that kind of personal touch with it. So I'm, I'm trying to manage that and that may change, you know, in the future, but right now that's what, that's what the, the goal of it is. I think that's really smart because you know, you could open something up like that and get, you know, a thousand people who sign up, um, same thing with your thing, Carl, and it's too many people to manage and try to help. And then, you know, you're spread too thin and nobody's getting their value. So, you know, limiting membership and, uh, and to a certain number of people where, you know, you can manage it and everybody gets, uh, you know, perfect value out of it. Um, I think that's, that's really smart. I just want to tag in on, you know, how to learn quickly and, and Teaching is definitely one of the ways. When I started to teach at Madison College back in, I want to say it was 2007, 2008, somewhere in there. I don't know, it was 2007. It's like all of a sudden I was teaching these uh, technical college students photography. And I'm like, oh, 
crap. <laughs> I kind of, I have to up my game a little bit because, you know, all the stuff I'm trying to teach them, I don't necessarily do all this stuff. So and I had to create all the teaching materials because there was no handbook. So I ended up having to uh, really up my game from a studio standpoint. And guess what? It helped my photography tremendously. And it was about the same time I was really getting into uh, print competition as well. And it helped my print competition. And that's helped, that helped grow me to the photographer I am today, which is still pretty mediocre, but you know, it, it helped me to get to my high level of mediocrity quicker. <laughs> <laughs> we love our high levels of mediocrity. Oh, a, that's here's okay. A toast, here's a toast to the truly mediocre. Here's, 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 you know, right. medio, yeah. Mediocres, yes. Yeah, and along with that too, I think, you know, we talked earlier about comparing and everything, but it, I always stress at the end of my programs is, you know, I'm here to hopefully inspire you and give you ideas. Now, it, you know, it took a long time to get where I'm at. I'm always growing. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is your clients hire you for you. You know, they're not comparing themselves to all these photographers. We do because we're around other photographers. But, um, and even if someone is better technically than you or, artistic than than you if they hired you they hired you for a reason that's for you it might be your personality it might be the that you're professional and you call them back right away you know there's a multitude of things so don't ever think like oh i wish i could do better this this client is maybe disappointed because you know you you're comparing yourself to someone else it's like they hired you for you and if they don't hire you that's okay too it maybe just means they don't they don't value photography. So or you don't, smell bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. they just might yeah. not like you. I'm you know just saying. Yeah, they don't like you. <laughs> but I, I you, just got a, you just got off a podcast and you smell like liquor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You saw me spill that, didn't you? I knew it. <laughs> I saw that. Basically, yeah. But I see photographers get on rants like, "Oh, I saw so and so hired someone and they they're undercutting me and this and that." I'm like, no, like it's okay. Like I like my wife and I like to go to have a nice dinner every once in a while. Not everyone appreciates nice dinners, so they're not going to pay for that, but we do same with thing with photography. Don't take it personal. You know, they may have more value on taking their whole family on a cruise and that's where they're going to invest their money. <laughs> you know, it's just going to last an extra two weeks. Beyond. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't go there. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You can stand ship for another two weeks. Yay. Yay. <laughs> In port yeah. without leaving your room, but yay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Our soda, it's good. Yeah, we should drink to that. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm, I'm no, I said our drinks out. included. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, that's true, too. So, Michael, hmm. uh, here's, here's a funny story that uh, – Oh God! Yeah, I don't know. A lot of you, yeah, a lot of you, if you know me, knew I, I, um, I was a natural light person. I mean, probably, and I still am. And but I used to do everything 100% <clears throat> natural light, and then all of a sudden, Michael came <laughs> came up with these lights that he found that are really kind of cool, and he showed it to us, and we're like, "Well, that's kind of neat and everything," um, but. Yeah, I, I'm happy with what I'm doing, but um, you know, he, he dove in head first, and I think did something really unique and wonderful for our industry. Um, because without without Michael going head first into uh, producing this Molite idea and giving us this system of strobes and lights, um, it we would there's so many of us that when be doing what we're doing for our guests right now. Um, I've changed to using uh, lights. I can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah, I, I changed. Um, and pretty much now, instead of carrying reflectors, I'm, I'm carrying a 600 with a, with an Octabox uh, with me everywhere I go. And, um, you know, I, I know that, you know, we're talking about uh, education stuff, but when it comes right down to it, uh, our equipment is part of our education too. And okay. you know, Michael does, um, you know, I just want to say, you know, toast to Michael. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for bringing us Molite and, and giving us equipment that can do things that we, we couldn't have made possible before, you know, the high speed sync without carrying great big batteries around and, um, 
the portability of everything and the light weight of everything and and just something that's user friendly has been a life changer uh, for me. I'm sure for a lot of other people too. So um, just want to say thank hats off to you, Michael. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Be creative you're with our equipment. <laughs> and people should people should know the process. I used to drive up to your photo shoots where you're out there using reflectors and natural light, and I roll down the window. It's like, hey, little boy, I've got flashes. <laughs> <laughs> we might edit that part out i don't know <laughs> it was a big brown van with a, yeah. no windows in it yeah, yeah i remember that yeah, yeah. yeah. Like 80 couple of 80s <laughs> under, underneath my trench coat i was gonna say yeah this is, you gotta trench coat we're gonna flash, gonna flash, flash you <laughs> yeah. as long yeah. as it's not the smelly jacket from the matrix oh, oh, yeah exactly That's everybody ready still, my, still yeah. in my closet that is still in my closet oh i think carl froze just in case, <laughs> in case we had to edit it out later, you know. <laughs> so to fill the viewers in, uh, we did a promo for a speaking gig we were doing, and we decided to call it the Senior Matrix, and it was like this whole theme, and we're going to do this composite. So we all got these outfits, these costumes, along the lines of the Matrix, and and Michael shows up with this jacket that he got from some goodwill or something, it was, but no, it was Amazon, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah, but it was, oh. it, was a long, it was a long, full length leather coat, and it was forty bucks. So you like, know how they how they say that <laughs> the the your senses are really important and the sense of smell lasts the longest. It is true <laughs> because I still can't get that scent of that jacket out of my. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, it wasn't in your studio. <laughs> true. <laughs> so I got I, this thing. I thought I was going to have to move. I thought it was like the oh. sign that. Oh, oh smelly car. I was just going to leave the keys. I, I think the only way to get the smell out of that jacket is to have an exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this thing and I got, I think I got it the day before we we're going to do the shoot and it came in from Amazon and I'm like, cool. I mean, this might be something I'll actually wear. And I got out like, oh, well, maybe that's just from the packaging. <laughs> no. So then no. I started to, uh, I started to panic and I hit it with Febreze. So I was like spraying it with Febreze and it just smelled like steaky Febreze. And then I put it in a, in a, like a big, um, Tupperware kind of big container and I put coffee grounds on there. <laughs> so maybe that would soak up. No, it smelled like coffee, Febreze stank. <laughs> By the way, I have something that I can, do you still have that code? It's in my garage. I can fix it. I now I can now fix it for you. I can fix it for you. I can get, really? I can get this. Yes. I don't have know. A, I have an ozone machine now that will take that scent right out of there and make it smell like a brand new car. It's going to be I, awesome. I, I swear that they didn't tan the leather. I mean, this was oh, from a cow awful. that was probably, it was probably only two days old. <laughs> <laughs> they shipped it. <laughs> this is pretty nasty. So beware. If, it, if it's too cheap to be uh, true, uh, it's probably too good to be true. Yeah. But you know yeah. what? That was a creative exercise. And it was so much fun. I'll never forget it. You know, flying through the air on top of a posing machine or posing table, <laughs> you know, trying to create the idea of the matrix. I, that was, that, was, that cool. was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun and it was a, a good exercise. And the funny thing is um, the three of us were doing it, but we were doing it with another individual from Texas and one from California. So right. they had to send their own images. And then I think Dan composited it all together. So um it was a, it was a really cool creative project, and I hope some people appreciated it at SPI at the time. But I'm not sure they knew the whole story. So, <laughs> well, you know, you know what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll dig out the um, I'll dig out the photo from that because I just found it the other day again. I can't remember what I was looking for, but um, I'll post that to the Facebook page because we created a Facebook page for the podcast, which is called, of course, Photo Happy Hour. So check out the Facebook page. Anytime we talk about things like, uh, for example, like. Uh, uh, ccphotocoach.com and uh, seniorsunlock.com. We'll put the links out there so you guys can just easily go find it because not not everybody spells real good and can type so good. So what are you doing, Carl? I'm opening <laughs> my bottle of whiskey. I was out. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you got opening another bottle. Ooh, did you hear that? <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, well, and, you know, and that, you know, brings up another, you know, not to get, we're maybe getting off a tangent, but it comes back to creativity and doing personal projects is something I've always done too. Like if I'm in a funk and I need some creativity, um, you know, or just doing like something like this, it was fun. 
it's not the the monotony maybe of 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 doing your everyday work and that's what print competition does as well as you know something like this or you know if you're ever in a funk just you know call up a friend or a, a model or something and and kind of wing it let's like let's let's do a creative shoot and it will it no matter it will just really spark at least for me it sparks my creativity or gets me out of a funk in and even if i'm super busy and i don't really have time like i don't have time for this i'm like knee deep and everything but what i find is i kind of like spin my wheels and so if i just take some time for myself create for myself then going back to the other work i uh, it's like it feels more refreshing or i kind of make it a little game like okay i have to get these all these orders out once these orders are out then i can edit that fun shoot um, so it's just a little like carrot that dangles in front of me mentally uh, to get stuff done, I guess. Well, I always found it funny. Point. Go ahead. That yeah, sorry, sorry, Michael. I always found it funny. You know, I, I hear from a lot of people about print competition that oh, they they don't use client work. They use personal things and they bring in uh, oh. models and they build sets. And I'm going, uh, yeah. Um, sometimes oh. they do and sometimes they don't. But the thing is is like I, I mentioned at the beginning of this program, I'm in a 10 year, 12 year, 13 year funk of creativity in my mind. I mean, to me, I feel that way. Um, I feel like I used to be a lot more creative and that because I used to do a lot more idea, you know, fun things like that or personal projects. And I just don't do that so much anymore. Cause I, I mean, I have other avenues. My kids are involved in this and that and the other thing and now they're in college and how the heck did that happen? But yeah. um, you know, and life just happens, but you know, it's, it's the personal projects that we as artists, and that's what we are as photographers, we are artists and we, you need to do that for yourself, not only for yourself, but for your guests. It's going to make your everyday work better. It's going to free you up. It's going to give you more inspiration. It's going to make you learn things. And by doing the personal projects, we're doing things on our own time, our our own dime, and we're not getting paid for it, so we don't have to worry. So right. throw all the, the pressure out the window and, and learn from yourself. So, yeah, by all means, don't knock the personal projects. Embrace them. Do it. I do it all the time now because of the excuse I have is I get a new modifier or two in for Molite or a new flash or a new LED. And it's like, I got to get sample images. So, you know, I'll call up a model friend and we'll set up a play date and, you know, I'll test out the new, uh, you know, I'll test out the new MoFo, you know, the 72 pitch parabolic diffused umbrella, you know, and, and then with, you know, with the mo blow, because you should have it blowing. You should have their hair oh, yeah, blowing I within did, that too. Yeah. I, I did the last mofo shoot. I did. I had, I had the blow mo working on it. it just, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and you, you, it's like Christmas energy. for you. It, it is. It's like you have Christmas every day at your place. It is. You have I all mean, these like, toys to play with. Uh, and, <laughs> and I've entered some of that stuff in print competition and have scored. <laughs> not real high but um, <laughs> merited you know I, sure. I first got my mo throw long throw reflector in i did a studio session with that and got an 82 it looked which, nice you know, too you know, yeah yeah it's nice yeah. and clean and simple and that's all i'm looking for anymore unless yep. i have some big grand idea and it's like yeah just bang out some merits i'm pete rose i'm hitting some singles that's all i'm trying to do <laughs> <laughs> just kind of slap it into left field you're not gonna well, yeah, bet on it, are you? Yeah, no, 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 okay. no betting. Oh, we should well, bet on print competition. But, oh. Ooh. Ooh. No, no, I bet that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and that's how I started. That's kind of how I started print competition was betting I mean, on print I, competition. No, I started betting. What <laughs> first started just by sitting. We talked earlier, just watching or Carl's critiques. You know, it's like I started. I'd go to convention and sit in print competition before the programs are. No. Uh, and and learn so much yeah i was like oh this is awesome um and then i started just shooting for fun and entering it i'm like oh well i don't care how this this scores because i'm just learning you know and it, i can i can play and i can do whatever i want lighting wise because it's not a paying client in front of me and then i would do my regular sessions and then i would have these creative sessions that i would do and it kind of all came full circle, circle because I'm drinking too much wine. I see I'm slurring my words. Have another one. Oh, you're getting more. You're getting more creative. Come on, keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> so it it 
<laughs> it came full circle because I I realized like, well, maybe I can do these really funky fashion kind of sessions with my seniors and people are either going to think, man, this guy is crazy or like is so unique. I need to hire this guy. And thank goodness it was the the second one, which is like, <laughs> hey, it's so he's, this is cool. I want to do this. And so, uh, you know, I'd have a fashion designer and a makeup artist and we go to a abandoned location and do this funky hair, funky makeup, dress these seniors up. And it was like theme sessions before I think theme sessions were a thing. Uh, we were, I was just out there doing it. And it was part of my my senior model program and, and people went nuts over it. And it, I thought, you know, no one's going to buy this. It was just for like marketing value. Uh, but to my surprise, like everyone wanted to get those images in their album. Yeah. And even grandparents were like, I want to order that. I sell canvases uh, of this. I'm like, really? To a grandparent? Like I'm thinking, <laughs> what? I thought you wanted like a headshot. Uh, but, you know, they said it's super creative. It's super artistic. And it's nothing that um, this – their grandchild is ever probably going to ever have the experience to do. And it's about the experience. And so, you know, if I never would have done these creative sessions and pushed myself, I never would have like went down that Avenue. So. Well, and the important thing is if you don't give them the opportunity to see it and buy it, they'll never buy it. So, you know, if you, if you do something creative and something different be the, uh, the purple strawberry or whatever it is you say, the, the green purple apple. apple. The green apple, the green the apple. red the apple, the, the, red, the apple. red apple, the purple car, the Tesla yeah. the electric truck, the Tesla truck. Yep. Yeah. You never, if you never take that risk and and put that out there the, to show to somebody, they never have the opportunity to like it and buy it. And if they don't, fine, you know, do it again. Maybe somebody else will buy it. And I, I have that happen all the time. I'll I'll take one or two images from a session and get you know really creative with it and do some composite or do some painting or do something with it. And most often they buy it and occasionally they're like, yeah, no, well, you know, and it's like, you know, look, the seniors like, what do you think of that? It's like, eh, it's kind of cool, but yeah, no. Okay, fine. You know, then what, you know what I do? I buy one Entry. and put it on the wall and say, screw you. All guys. right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's I how I used to think when they come in, it's like, Oh, How's that look now that it's a 20 by 30 on the wall? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how I used to pick my competition images. They were picked in spite when people didn't yes. like something I did. For, <laughs> I'm serious. When they didn't like what I did for them, I'm like, well, I'll show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter in print competition. That's how I pick my my competition images yeah. I've done and, that. and my display images. Um, and I don't do that so much anymore. But the thing is, you hit it on the head. Not only – not every time you do something fun and creative and artistic that you really like, or that all of us photographers, because we're visual people like is going to mean that it's going to sell it, it. And it's not, I mean, think about this. I mean, many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, I'm, I'm older than you think. Um, I was trying to How learn. You? I'm older than 10. I'm older <laughs> than 18. All right. Uh, but I was trying to learn, more about well, good because you're drinking so. i am that's true. <laughs> good point um i was trying to learn more about color and you know struggling with <laughs> nice one michael i was trying, <laughs> i was trying to learn more about color and so i bought a day-by-day -day calendar from monet and every day there was another painting on the calendar so i'd tear it off and you, act, you actually bought it from monet. you are old if I, you I am old. i'm very old from monet. <laughs> That dude, he, and he, I th to this day, I think I think he ripped me off on the price of it. I'm just saying, but I no, I was it like on the street somewhere in like Italy or where, where was this? I should have kept them because now they're probably, worth, they're probably worth something now. Just saying, yeah. uh, no, sorry, I, <laughs> excuse me, would you like to buy a Canada? <laughs> well, he did talk funny, I'm just saying, but uh, no, I bought it from a bookstore, but anyhow, I, I learned after about a week that I. I just, I didn't like Monet's work. I'm just not yeah. a fan, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah, it was a beautiful, fan. yeah, it was a, compo a nice composition, absolutely. But it it was, you know, it just wasn't me. It just wasn't, it wasn't my interest. And it, it made me learn a couple of things. Yeah, I did learn a bit, a little bit co about color and I learned a little, a lot about composition. So it there there was some good things to it too. But, but I also learned probably the best lesson was that not, this is Monet. I mean, for Monet, you know, and 
and I didn't, and not everybody likes his work. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just Carl, I'm Carl, I'm Carl. And so everything that I do, whether it's something I like or put my, my heart and soul into, not everybody's going to like it, you know? So we have to understand that, you know, and not everything we do, not everybody's going to like what we put out in front of them. That's all there is to it. So and that's okay. No, it is. Not. It's okay. Everything we put out there, nobody likes and nobody buys and everybody hates. <laughs> maybe it's time to look at the night shift at taco bell yeah well we did start this in the alley by recorded, now, so. recorded at 2 a.m yeah. at taco bell yeah. actually i could use some of them tacos if you could knock on that door back there i'm just saying i, I don't usually eat at taco bell but right. it is getting late you know <laughs> it is all the taco bell time um, yeah and, and just to clarify it's like you can shoot your regular session i usually shoot a regular session and get the safe images and be like hey let's try something it's digital i'm not it doesn't cost us anything uh i do in-person sales so if you hate the image no one's gonna see it but right. if we don't try if we don't experiment we don't know what's gonna happen here and, and you don't grow you don't grow and it's some of the best it could be some of the best images or it could be a failure but unless you try you're not gonna know and and like I said, like like you guys said too, like worst case scenario, it's a great marketing piece or something you can enter in, in print competition. Um, but yeah, like it, push yourself every day, I guess, in, in in every session. So we're coming up on last call, guys. Any parting shots on creativity you want to add in? Shots? We're doing shots? Oh, shots. Wow. I wasn't, ex I wasn't expecting that, actually. But. <laughs> we, 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 that should be a feature, parting shots. I mean, think about that. Are they in shots? What? Or we should I wish we could have some sort of virtual shot ski. I mean, that's Ooh. a Wisconsin tradition. It, it is. is. And a sync tradition. <laughs> Some, you know. Somebody needs to explain what a shot ski is. So we need, a we'll, shot we'll ski. post it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to we'll, we'll post a gif. I'm sure there's a yeah. It's a well, gif. Well, actually, we'll use a picture from know. sync. We have a picture there from sync. Somebody oh, has yeah. that. Yes, yes. We'll we'll post that. But yeah. Carl, you have any parting words of wisdom? <laughs> Um, you know, the thing is, like you said, things don't happen overnight. Um, and we are just like the medical field. Um, most of the time we are practicing photography. They are practicing medicine. They're practicing law. It says it right on the professionals offices. Uh, we are professionals too. We are practicing photography. So actually do that practice reach stretch grow get a coach do different things um get a get a client in to just play but practice your craft so that we can elevate the this industry that's that's my my goal i guess i, I just want to see that happen wise words i think good words to end on so this episode has been brought to you by tito's vodka tito's <laughs> nothing says i'm cheap and easy like good old tito's <laughs> vodka <laughs> <laughs> Which none of us are drinking right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> exactly, because none of us are cheap and easy. All right, <laughs> next time, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You've been listening to the Photo Happy Hour podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to not miss a single action-packed episode. And join our Photo Happy Hour Facebook group where we'll post links to the stuff we all talk about. You can find my Molite gear online at www.gomolite.com. That's G O. M-O-L-I-G-H-T dot com. You can find the Facebook page under Molite Store, and I also run the Godox Flash Help Group on Facebook. You can find Dan's Senior Unlocked website at www.seniorsunlocked.com. That's seniors with an S at the end, unlocked.com, and the Facebook group under Seniors Unlocked. And you can find Carl's Coaching Corner at www.ccphotocoach.com, ccphotocoach.com. Till next time, cheers to you.